website. This is uh, chapter four, review worksheet number one, um, continued. This is the back page. So number three, uh, the graph of the function f is shown uh, to the right, consisting of a semicircle and three line segments. Uh, let g of x uh, be the function given by g of x equals uh, the definite integral of f of t dt from negative three to x. So we see that uh, g of x is defined as the definite integral of a, um, a function. So that means that this f of t is the derivative function of this uh, g of x, okay, essentially. And uh, so we're going to treat this graph like as if it were a velocity graph, as, a, as if it were a uh, derivative graph, okay. And uh, let's just go ahead and establish uh, some of these rules in place that we'll be using. Uh, we have g of x is defined, um, given here. Okay, so this is a notation that's set up where when we, when we want to find g prime of x, we have to go through uh, the second theorem of calculus. So g prime, um, remember second theorem of calculus, uh, if we want to find the derivative of a definite integral from a constant to a variable, um, uh, these two operations essentially cancel each other out, uh, the derivative and uh, uh, integral notation or process. And we just have to plug in the upper bound into the function. Right. So x goes in for uh, this t, so f of x, multiplied by the upper um, bound derivative. So the derivative of x is 1, so then f of x times 1 is simply going to be f of x. So we have, um, uh, we have a rule established for g prime of x. So g prime of x is simply going to be f of x. Okay. And then part, uh, and then the next part, if I want to find g double prime of x, okay. so if I find the derivative of g, g prime, uh, so g prime will turn into g double prime, and then f of x would turn into f prime. Okay. So uh, we have g of x, g prime, and g double prime defined. So we'll come back to this um, uh, when we want to find uh, the appropriate information. Right. Now this graph here is essentially the derivative graph um, and whenever you have a problem where they give you geometric shapes uh, you'll be most likely uh, uh, be expected to find the areas yourself. Uh, so I'm going ahead and just find uh, the values of these, uh, uh, of these regions uh, between the graph and the x-axis. So we have uh, triangles, um, rec uh, rectangles. We have uh, portions that's made up of uh, rectangle minus semicircle, and then uh, portions that are triangle. So triangle in this region uh, is one half base times height. This will give me um, area of, of one. But since this sits below the x-axis, we have to give this um, the region a negative value. Okay. This uh, triangle here is also one half base times height, gives us one. And I'm, I'm splitting this region up into a rectangle, and then sitting on top is a triangle. So this rectangle here is uh, one uh, base times height, so three times one is three. Uh, this triangle here has a, a, a base of three and a height of one. So one half base times height uh, will give us uh, 1.5. Okay. Now this shaded region is a combination of, um, uh, is, is created from a rectangle minus a semicircle. So if you see this rectangle here um, is uh, one is base times height minus uh, the semicircle here will give me this shaded region there. So uh, my rectangle is two times one. My sem semicircle is one half pi r squared. My radius is one. So 1 half pi times 1 squared will be pi over 2. So 2 minus pi will give me um, uh, this uh, shaded, uh, the area of the shaded region. Again, uh, triangle here, so 1 half base times height gives me 0.5. Um, and then here again, triangle, 1 half base times height. Uh, but this sits below the x-axis, so we have to give it a negative value, negative 0.5. Okay, part B, uh, find g of 0. So to find g of 0, we go back to the rules that we've established. Uh, g of x is given to us. So all we need to do is replace x with 0. So I'm taking this and just replacing x with 0 and then looking to see what we can do to evaluate. So the definite integral 
of my function from negative 3 to 0. So I simply look, at, look back at my graph. I have all my um, area and my definite integral values found. So definite integral from negative 3 to 0, which is going to be this region here. So 3 plus 1.5 is simply 4.5. g prime of 0. I need to find g prime of 0. Let's look back at our rule. We found from before that g prime of x is f of x. So just replace x with 0. g prime is 0, simply f of 0. And f of 0, okay, since the graph that's given to us is, is the f of uh, x graph, or f of t graph, all I need to do is uh, find the order pair. Okay? So the order pair on the graph f of 0 is simply going to be 1. Okay? So that's my solution. Uh, g double prime of negative 1, let's go back to the rule that we've established. G double prime of x is simply equal to f prime of x. So g double prime of negative 1 will equal to f prime of negative 1. Okay? So f prime of negative 1 is asking for the slope of the function at negative 1. Okay? And we can find the slope uh, using, g, uh, using slope formula because we have a straight line. So if I simply find the slope of the line segment and using my endpoints, negative 3, 2, and 0, 1, if I just find the slope between these two points, um, then I can find the slope at negative 1 because any slope on that line segment will share the same slope. Okay. So 2 minus 1 over negative 3, negative 1 third. Okay. Part B. Find all values of x in the open interval uh, from negative 5 to 4 at which g attains a relative maximum. Okay, so if I want to find uh, the relative maximum of g of x, okay, I can treat, again, I can treat this like g prime, right? because I know that g prime of x is, is my f of x graph. So anything that sits below the x-axis represents uh, negative slope. Anything above represents positive slope. Any um, x-intercepts represent uh, critical points. So I just create my sign line here, my endpoints, negative 5 and 4. My critical points, negative 4, 1, and 3. Between negative 5 and negative 4, I have negative slope below the x-axis. Between 4 and 1, above the x-axis. Between 1 and 3, above the x-axis. And then between 3 and 4, the graph sits below the x-axis. Okay. So I know the shape of my uh, f of x graph, my, sorry, g of x graph is simply going to be uh, relative minimum at negative 4, uh, slope at, zero, at 1, but uh, slope of 0 at 1, but no uh, uh, relative max or min since there's no change in signs. And at 3, we know there's a relative max. So just by looking at um, the sign line, we, can, we know that there's a relative max at x equals 3 because g prime changes from positive to negative. Okay, part D, uh, find the absolute minimum. Right? And remember, anytime they're asking for a minimum value, they're, at, they're asking about the y value. Okay, find the absolute minimum of g on the closed interval, negative 5 to 4. Okay, absolute minimum on the closed interval, this is uh, essentially asking you to apply extreme value theorem. And the extreme value theorem says that uh, your absolute um, extrema must occur at either the endpoints or um, uh, the relative extrema. But since we're only looking f uh, for the absolute minimum value, we only need to test the endpoints and test the relative minimums. Okay? The relative max uh, will never be the absolute minimum value, so we can leave that out. Okay? So I want to test the endpoints. So I want to test g of negative 5. I want to test g of, of uh, positive 4. Those are the endpoints. But then I also want to test my relative minimum, which from part c, I, can, I, I know that my relative minimum will be at negative 4. So go back to uh, the rule that so we have for g of x. g of x is simply definite integral from negative 3 to x of f of t dt. So just replace x with uh, these x values that we want to evaluate. So uh, the definite integral of f of t from negative 3 uh, to negative 5. Okay. Now, whenever we want to read a graph uh, using a definite integral, um, it's easier to evaluate um, whenever the lower bound is the smaller value. So I'm going to rewrite this with negative 5 as the, as the uh, lower bound. But whenever I switch bounds, I have to pull a negative out. So uh, the definite integral from negative 5 to negative 3, um, so from negative 5 to negative 3, I go back to my graph from negative 5 to negative 3. So negative 1 plus 1 will give me 0. 
So that will just cancel out um, uh, to be 0. Okay, so I know g of negative 5 is 0. g of negative 4, okay, go back to my rule, replace x with negative 4. Uh, for, so from negative 3 to negative 4, again, I want to, I want to um, rewrite my definite integral with the lower bound of being the smaller value. But then that, that means I need to pull a negative out. Okay, so then when I do that, um, between negative 4 and negative 3, um, I see that uh, my value is going to be a positive 1. Okay, but then when I replace it with positive 1, I still have a negative on the outside. So that gives me a negative 1. Okay, g of 4 is a definite integral from negative 3 to positive 4. So I go back. Okay, from negative 3 to positive 4, I'm going to add all these regions up. Okay, so 3 plus 1.5 plus 2 minus pi over 2 plus 0.5 minus 0.5, and all that um, uh, will give me 6.5 minus pi over 2, which is um, uh, relatively going to be 5. Okay, so we compare all these y values 0, negative 1, 5. And so the absolute minimum, it will be at negative 1 at x is equal to negative 4. Okay. Part E, find uh, all the values of x on the open interval at which the graph of f has a point of inflection. So this is asking, so if we're looking at, if the graph that's given to us is the derivative graph, then we have to know how to, um, uh, to interpret the derivative graph to find the point of inflection. So if you recall, any... Uh, relative max and relative min on the uh, derivative graph will represent uh, the point of inflection. Okay, these are the points where um, uh, the slope uh, will hit a maximum. And so um, we know the critical points will be at negative 3 and at 1. And then we just read uh, the slopes. So between uh, in this first region, we have a positive slope, which, which means uh, concave up. This region is all concave down this region concave up and then finally concave down. Okay. Okay, so I see that there are change of signs at negative 3, 1, and 2 so point of inflection will occur at these three x values and our uh, reason is because g double prime changes signs at these points.